All right, so before I go into the configuration that I have on my computer, I just wanted to show my physical configuration just so you get an idea of how my stuff is set up in comparison to yours. Um, I have um, a audio S video cable running out of my Super Nintendo to the back of my Radio Shack amplifier splitter. I mean, there are a bunch of different ways to split signal, but this one worked pretty well for me and it was recommended, so... Um, this box is pretty cheap. It's only like 20 bucks or something. Anyway, um, this is going through S-Video cable and audio. Uh, it outputs to two different sources. This side goes to my TV, and this side goes to my GV USB 2. So I don't have the composite plugged in. It's just the S-Video and the two audio going to my GV USB 2. And that goes to my laptop, and that's it. Pretty simple. So... I'll go to desktop capture now. So as far as vMix goes, uh, you can just download it from the site like that. Uh, it's a 60 day trial, but that's for anything that's considered high def 720p and above. In our case, we're just doing 480, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the installation itself is nothing special. So I'll just go through that really quickly. So keep in mind that um, vMix allows you not just to output to a stream. And uh, when you're outputting to a stream via OBS, you're actually using a uh, virtual device that vMix adds. So you're not window capturing vMix. You're adding a video capture device, which is vMix video or something like that, and using that to uh, display the, uh, the game. Uh, vMix also adds something called vMix Social. It's a separate application, so you can just remove it from programs and features. So I'll launch vMix here. All right. So I still may have some default configuration settings in here somewhere. I'm not really sure. Uh, let me take a look at some things. Uh, okay, so first thing is you want to go to Settings, and where it says Display, Make sure your master frame rate is NTSC 2997P and your output size is 720 by 480 because this is this is the default way that um, GV USB 2 will output uh, aspect ratio normal. Yeah. Um, as far as outputs options, there's nothing else that you really need to do here. Um, I suppose you could do something with graphics adapters if you wanted to, but just leave that alone. Uh, your output format should be YUY2 if you're using um, composite or S-Video. So just make sure that's selected. Everything else is fine. As far as decoders and recording, don't really worry about any of that stuff. Uh, you're mostly doing this to output to OBS. Um, you also have the option to record a separate stream on vMix if you want. So you could output to OBS, to Twitch, and then do a local recording as well without your voice or all the overlays and all that stuff, but uh, I won't go into any of that. Uh, so now that we have those basic settings in, you want to add input. So I'll just click down there. Uh, we want to go to camera. My camera here is the GV USB 2 analog capture, so I'll just highlight that. Uh, I'm using S-Video for input. If you're using composite, go ahead and choose that, but the uh, quality will be um, more lossy, I would assume. Uh, resolution 720 by 480, NTSC 2997, just like we configured before. Uh, same video format, audio device is the same. Uh, there's no other selection here for audio format, so yeah, that just stays the same. Uh, but these are the settings that you want there. And then as soon as you hit OK, it's going to start capturing. So you can see that we already have it there. Uh, let me just turn down the volume a little bit. There we go. Alright, so this is the video and it's not deinterlaced yet. So there are deinterlacing settings in vMix, but we're going to deinterlace through OBS Studio since it has those available to us right after we uh, do a capture.
So the next step here is to go to the gear next to external and go to settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on external right after we go through all these settings to output to OBS. But before we do that, we want to make sure that VMix video streaming is checked off under external output. And I think, yeah, everything else is, is normal, yeah. Don't worry about that stuff. Um, you want to make sure that's checked off. You want to make sure NTSC 29970p again, but you want the output size to be 640 by 480. Because if it's 720 by 480, it's going to be stretched. So, as long as it's 640 by 480, it's going to look good in OBS. Because uh, that's the 4 by 3 ratio that we want. So, we have that checked off. Um, I mean, selected. Sorry. Um, hit OK. And I can just click External. And as soon as that goes red, you can add the device in OBS. And it'll show up on your stream. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna just minimize this and maximize OBS. All right, so this is my SM test scene that I just added. Uh, let me remove this just so I can add another one. So I wanna add a video capture device. I want that to be my, I don't want that to be my GV USB 2. I want that to be vMix video because vMix is acting as the proxy here. So we add vMix video. And uh, we can just leave this all as default, basically. Uh, we don't need to change any of this. But you can see that if I run around here, this is interlaced. It is, it is not deinterlaced yet, so... This OBS makes this pretty easy to do. You just right-click, you go to deinterlacing, and you choose Retro. And there you go. Now it looks nice. Now... As far as making it fit your screen, um, I believe the default output is like 576 by 448 for SNES. It's something like that. The problem is when you're playing Super Metroid, you get black bars and uh, you don't see the full possible output. So what I like to do here is just use um, Legend of Zelda as a reference, which I'll do right now. So, if I bring up the Zelda ROM... Alright, so... You can see that... If I move this image to about there, you can see that it perfectly cuts everything off so that you don't have any kind of um, overflow onto the outside of the screen where the user can't see it, the viewer or whatever. So it gives you a perfect position and then you can just kind of move it into the corner. And then you're all set. You have your full image output there and you can add anything else you want to the right side. And that's just, it's just nice to use Link to the Past because, I don't know, it's very easy to align everything with that. So now that we have that, I can go back to Super Metroid. And you can see that on the starting screen, everything's aligned properly. And the output looks really decent, like... If I run around like this, you can see that, um... There's no real stuttering or anything. It's, um... It's pretty smooth. And the fact that vMix is easy to set up kind of simplifies things, so... Uh, what else, what else? Uh, the one last thing, I'll just show you the profile settings that I have in here for this. For video, I'm running 796 by 448 It's not true 16 by 9 but it's pretty close. So, I think um, Twitch will add a single 
black, uh, one pixel black bar on both sides of your stream, which is hardly even noticeable. But that's a good resolution setting. Um, the only downside is, you know, if you use a camera or something, it's gonna be pixelated, but uh, it gives you the true resolution of the game. You don't have to stretch out the image or make it smaller or anything, and that's that's pretty neat. So uh, it's probably the best way to view uh, any output from the Super NES or I guess maybe even NES for that matter. Anyway, um, I know this is kind of overlong and rambling, but hopefully this gives you the info you need. And uh, that's about it.